Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here with another Master Duel video for you guys. So today we're going to be taking a look at Adventure Tenny. Uh, this build is um, the post banless build, which kind of like Sword Soul Tenny is like, we just end up taking one cross that as a nader out, right? Um, and it's not that we just took one out and called it a day. Uh, like Sword Soul Tenny, when making a new list for the post ban list meta, um, I did fully break it down and, you know, start from scratch, but like most of the time I do that, I end up kind of back where I started, mostly where I started, actually in this case, exactly where I started anyway. So, um, I, it, like I said before though, it feels good to do that. That might seem like, well, that seems like a waste of time, but I think really what that just means is, because the reason I like to fully, you know, take every card out of the deck and then put, put them all back in, even stuff that might seem like obvious inclusions, like stuff for the combo, like the Rose Dragons or the Tenny stuff. Uh, the reason I like to do that is just because I want to make sure that I have like the best, what I feel is like the best build um, moving forward and not just one that's based on an old build and an old like, you know, metagame slash way of thinking slash what have you. So, um, yeah, so that's why I like to do it that way, and that's also why, again, when I arrive at pretty much the same list, that's satisfying to me, because that means, like, okay, I am still playing the best list, I am still in the best space, I think, moving forward uh, with this list. So, again, all we've really done here is taking out one of the cross eye designators, and we're playing one instead of two now, and uh, we're just kind of moving forward with that, so... Uh, the deck is still very, very powerful post banless because, uh, like most decks that utilize the Halk Dawn engine, all it really lost was the Cross Eye Designator, which is not an insignificant hit, uh, as this deck is fairly combo based, and the Cross Eye Designator is, of course, extremely important to protecting many combos. But, you know, it's not the only card we have to do that. We have the, the Call Buys as well, and uh, Adventure Tenny is a deck that has the potential to be fairly resilient. It isn't always, not every hand is like that, but there are some hands where you can get disrupted by something like a Nibiru or, well, maybe not necessarily a Nibiru, sometimes a Nibiru. I don't know, it kind of just depends, but, uh, um, yeah, sometimes like a Nibiru or an Ash or whatever, you'll get disrupted, but you can still make plays anyway. And of course, being an adventure deck, uh, by nature, the, the adventure cards will already like bait out a lot of potential disruption. Um, and then, you know, either they do that and then you can do your main combo or they don't and you set up a Griffin and then you do your main combo and then you have a Griffin to protect it as well. Um, but, you know, this deck is also one of those ones where the adventure cards are not just, uh, um, um, you know, insurance for your combos, but also part of a lot of your combos as well, such as using Griffin as a level seven to make, you know, like the 42 Galaxy Tomahawk, which we do have a game where we do that. So we'll get to see that and a lot more in the games that we have coming up here. So yeah, like I said, build hasn't really changed much, too much and I don't think we'll change ultimately too much moving forward. It might a little bit, just depending on how the meta shakes out, but I think that's gonna be more of a uh, thing we'll have to address, uh, you know, once we've actually played a little bit in the new meta there, so. Nah, not much else to say. I guess let's go ahead and break down into the list. We have two Chiwen, Light of the Yang Zing, one Jet Synchron, one Tendi Spirit at Hara, three Maxi, two Mecha Phantom Beast O Lion, three Ash Blossom in Joyous Spring, three Red Rose Dragon, one Rocks Rose Dragon, two Water Enchantress of the Temple, one Sword Soul of Taya, one Sword Soul Strategist Long Yuan. This is actually one thing. I knew there was one other thing I wanted to mention. I thought about taking this out to make it an even 40, but there's been a lot of the times where you can actually lead with Long Yuan into Baron and then do a combo, which is a nice way of uh, adding that level of insurance. So I'm going to keep the Long Yuan for now, but if you really want to go down to 40 cards, you can just take this card out. I think it'd be fine. But uh, just a little disclaimer there. Anyway, we are also playing three Tenny Spirit Vishuda, three Tenny Spirit Ashna, one Wandering Griffin Rider, one Nibiru the Primal Being, one Arch Nemesis Perutos, one Foolish Burial, one Sword Soul Emergence, two Rite of Armisir, one Dracoback, the Rideable Dragon, one Fateful Adventure, two Called by the Grave, one Cross Out Designator, one Basal Rose Shoot, no, Basal, it's Basal Rose Shoot, as in the word base. A comment told me that. I remember that, thank you. Uh, one Infinite Permanence, and then one Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing. Uh, down here in the extra deck, we have one Herald of the Arc Light, one Denglong, First of the Yang Zing, one Yazi Evil of the Yang Zing, one Baxia Brightness of the Yang Zing, one Borload Savage Dragon, one Sword Soul Grandmaster Chi Shao, one Chao Fang Phantom of the Yang Zing, one Baron de Fleur, one Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Cheng Ying, one number 42 Galaxy Tomahawk, one Salmon Great Almirage, one Monk of the Tenyi, one Chris Shrine Halky Fibrax, one Barricade Borg Blocker, and then of course one Mecha Fana Beast Aurora Dawn. All right, now that we have covered the deck list, let's go and take a look at some games. 
first game here is going to be against Adventure Pranks. Of course, this is um, pre-banned list, these games, so uh, it'll be full power Adventure Pranks, but uh, still should prove to be decent testing anyway. Yeah, I mean, like, there's not a whole lot to test necessarily, I guess, at this point, because this list is not very different at all. But, uh, anyway, we're going to leave with a Foolish Burial here, but the opponent's got an Ash Blossom for us. I don't know if it's necessarily right to Ash Blossom Foolish nowadays. Like, I feel like it's really easy for the opponent to just have a Water Enchantress in the hand anyway. I feel like maybe you should be waiting for that, but I don't know. I could see it either way. I could see arguments for either or, so, um... We're just going to special the Ashna and normal the O-Line. As always, as long as you have a tuner and one other monster, you can make your plays there. So, um, yeah, we can even with the O-Line chain block the Halky Fibrax effect, which is really, really nice. So, uh, even an upside to using O-Line as your tuner there. Of course, we're going to pull the Jet Synchron before going into the Aurora Don. Now, of course, you won't be able to use the uh, O-Line effect later in the turn, but that's fine. It's not that big of a deal at all. We've got the extra token either way. It's not like it's going to go away in the meantime, so. We are still going to use Jet Synchron's effect. I'll get rid of this extra Ashina and then sack that off with the Aurora Dawn in order to pull the second O Lion from the deck. Uh, also, why we play two O Lion, and also why we play two Chi Win, by the way. Uh, if you've ever wondered about that, is because you need to pull both those cards from the deck in order to do your combos. Like, Jet Synchron is fine to summon from hand because of Halk, but. Um, yeah, Chi Win and the O Lion both specifically have to be pulled from the deck. That's why we're playing two copies of each of those. Alright, now we can go into the Baron, going into the uh, Yazzie here. If you can get into Baron and Yazzie, then from that point, you've just got the rest of the combo pretty easily there. Um, if you are wondering exactly how this combo is fully played out and you're looking for a more in-depth explanation, uh, feel free to check out the link in my description there where you will find a link to my Adventure Tingy Combo Guide where we break down all of these combos again in more uh, depth and more detail there. So there, We're going to end up ending on a pretty standard turn one. Actually, I remember this hand. We actually don't end up on like quite a standard turn one board um, because we're going to end up sacrificing the nine pillars in order to be able to make a Chow Fang there. I do value that a little bit highly, having the Chow Fang out as opposed to having the nine pillars down with like a, a Chi Win or something. So yeah, there are there are the occasional hand where you'll have to, or there is the occasional hand, I don't know what I said are. There is the occasional hand where you'll have to give up your nine pillars in order to make the Chow Fang if you want to, if you value that again. Um, when going into a blind matchup like this, I do prefer having the Chow Fang. Uh, then having, again, just the nine pillars set up with, like, a, I guess it'd be a Baxia, maybe in this case, like, Baxia or a Chiwin or whatever. Uh, not only just because of the light negation, but also, like, um, you know, Chaofeng's other effects are still very, very relevant. Like, the ability to summon worm monsters when monsters get destroyed by card effects, or uh, the ability to, to search a tuner when it gets destroyed. Um, Chaofeng is just generally a very strong card. Again, not just for stopping light effects, but generally speaking, so... In combination, rather in tangent with the, uh, well, yeah, in combination with the Proto shutting off dark effects, we'll shut off most decks. Prankids are not one of them, but we could just use Baron to stop the uh, Lampsies effects here. I thought the, the Griffin Rider was probably a bait for the Baron, so that's why I'm more comfortable using the Baron effect on Lampsies here. And as you can see, that's going to be enough for the opponent to concede, as they do not have a follow up once their Lampsies is negated. Yeah, um, I might not always necessarily negate right there. Um, in this scenario, but, well, I guess in in some scenarios, but in this scenario, and I think most, but in this scenario, it was fine, again, because the summoning of the Griffin Rider just obviously seemed like bait to me, uh, which kind of me, told me they were desperate for me to use my Baron Negate, so, um, yeah, of course, the alternative there was to, if they, you know, somehow managed to stop that, we'll just, uh, well, we'd only have to be able to use the um, Chi Shao on the Dodo Dodo Do, which wouldn't be able to fully stop them. They sh if, you know, most Prank Kids uh, combo, uh, Prank Kids combos should be able to segue into a DPE from that, but would still be at least a fine, you know, I guess, um, what's the word? Compromise there. So, all right, now that we've taken care of that, let's go and take a look at the next game. This deck is going to be against the Danger Kaiju deck. So, it's funny, like, Danger Kaiju, Lunalite stuff, like, Rank 8s and all that. It's funny, I've actually been seeing that deck a lot more lately than, like, uh, Numerons. So now when I go, or rather when an opponent lets me go first, I kind of assume it's that deck more than Numeron. And in this case, that ended up being the case. So, it's funny, we actually almost end up with the exact same opening hand we had last time here. 
Um, except this time we don't have a foolish to start the adventure line, so I'm just going to special the Ashina, normally O Lion, see if I need to use this cross out here. Um, again, we're going to use the O Lion to chain block the Halk here. Uh, always very nice when you can do that. Uh, you know, means that your opponent can't use, uh, like, no, they can still use Veil or Imperm, but so they can't use Ash on the Halk in that case, so. Getting the Jet Synchron and then going into the Aurora Dawn. Um, yep, from here it's just going to be more, like, standard combo stuff. Uh, this time we do have enough resources in hand to end on the kind of formal ending board of um, Baron plus Chi Shao plus Xiao Fang plus Protoss plus also then the Nine Pillars, which we had to blow up last time with Baxia in order to be able to make the uh, Xiao Fang. Um, I also just didn't want to discard my Nibiru. I could have just done that. I, I failed to mention that too. Um, or no, 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 sorry. I could have discarded Nibiru because you have to send it from the field to the grave. Sorry, my bad. I misspoke there. Um, but no, in this case, like, I can just set, like, this cross out or imperm, and then just get rid of that instead of the nine pillars here. So, we'll just end up doing it that way. I think, I was debating this, like, in, in real time, too. Um, and I think what I ultimately end up sacrificing is the cross out designator, because, you know, if my opponent had a Nibiru, they would have had the prompts to activate it by this point, right? And, like, it would have shifted over to them, and they hadn't this whole time. Now, granted, they could have been leaving their prompt trigger on off in order to, you know, make me think they didn't have Nibiru, which, um, I've done sometimes before, and sometimes I see people do. I think, like, you, because you might ask, like, is that worth it to do? Like, I don't know if you think it is. Like, it's not, like, a bad practice to have, but it is something you need to be mindful of if you're going to be doing. You want to make sure that, you know, you don't leave your trigger set on off by the time you actually want to play the Nibiru. So, in any case, this is kind of my roundabout way of saying I didn't think they had an out from this point forward, so I think if I recall correctly, I just ended up setting the cross at Designator and blowing that up within the, with the uh, Baxia. Nope, it was the Imperm. <laughs> so forget everything I just said. <laughs> oh, gotta love it. Yeah, I don't know. I um, because the Imperm would be better in a vacuum, right? Um, if we if our opponent doesn't have a Nibiru at all. Um, and it's funny because like once the Chow Fang comes out, then obviously you don't have to worry about Nibiru whatsoever. Also, did I not search a Sword Soul Emergence there? That was odd. Oh, I couldn't because they drone locked. That's right, because I tried to and got banished. I was talking about just other stuff and I talked right over that. Yeah, my opponent did have a drone lock, but all that affected was the ability to get the Protos, basically, so it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, this Chi, uh, sorry, this Chao Feng ended up being a really good call as the opponent had both, the, as you saw, the Ecclesia and the Luna Light there, both of which were stopped. Um, their effects were stopped by the Chao Feng, so uh, all they can do with those is go into the Chaos Ruler. Um, the Danger Bigfoot I thought about potentially negating with the Baron, but I ultimately decided to let it resolve. Um, because I really just wasn't that, honestly just wasn't that concerned by it. <laughs> and it actually ended up, um, discarding itself, and then at that point, okay, then I had to negate the destroy effect. But, um, yeah, I did think about negating just the reveal effects that would have caused it to be destroyed, and then they wouldn't have been able to do, like, you know, either effect anyway. But, I just wanted to, I don't know, I figured, again, if they summon the Bigfoot, it's not that big of a deal, and if they discard it, then we can just negate the destruction effect with Baron, which we ultimately did anyway, so... Uh, from here, they'll try to use the Chaos Ruler effect. I don't want them to get any more resources at this point, so I'm just going to go ahead and negate it with Chi Shao. And I still like having the Chao Fang online, because... Um, you know, it's going to stop... Like like I said, it already stopped the Luna Light and the Ecclesia, so... It has a lot of targets against this deck. I actually expected them to battle over the Chao Fang, but they battle over the Chi Shao instead. That's definitely more than fine with me. Um, here, I'll just activate the Baron effect to pop their Chaos Ruler. Um, and that's going to allow me to use the Chao Fang effect in order to summon something to set up with this uh, Baron here. Let's see, I destroyed, what, a Dark Monster, so it'll summon a Vishuda. Yeah, so then I can summon the Red Rose, go into a uh, Cheng Ying, and get game that way. But, um, yeah, opponent's got a Max E, I'll just cross that as an ear that, and that's enough for the opponent to concede as they only have one of their card left after that, and I can't imagine it's anything that I wouldn't be able to deal with in this scenario. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next game. Okay, so this one's going to be against the good old Dinosaurs. I haven't played against this deck in a while. Dinosaurs is one of those rogue decks that I'm actually fairly interested in, but uh, the problem with that is that it costs so many ultra-rare points, right, for fossil digs, uh, miscellaneouses, ultimate conductors, like... If I was going to invest, like, that level of uh, ultra-rares for a rogue deck, I'd just build heroes, honestly. Alright, so we have the adventure line to start off with here. We actually have... It's interesting, right? We have the 
the Red Rose and the Vishuda and the Adventure Line, so we kind of like just have it all here. Um, what I'm ultimately going to do is I'm just going to go for um, like the the kind of standard Red Rose line, but I'm still going to use the Adventure Line setup here. So uh, basically, I'm just going to go straight into the Hulk instead of sinking into Baron first. If I tried to go for Baron first, then I wouldn't have enough. Uh, what do you call it? I wouldn't have enough uh, negates there. Actually, what I should have done, because my opponent does have a Nibiru that I end up Griffin Ridering here, and I'm just now realizing what I should have done is not summon the Griffin Rider yet. I should have just normaled the Red Rose after specialing the Vishuda, then synced into Baron. Well, then the Baron still would have occupied the zone, though, is the problem. Yeah, that's the problem with not being able to Baron plus Griffin Rider there, is that we were one zone short of being able to actually like make our plays if we do it that way, so... Um, in any case, so we did have the Griffin Rider for the Nibiru, so we're able to continue with our Hulk Dawn line. I'm going to sacrifice the Adventure token here, um, because I don't need the token anyway, because obviously I don't have access to Griffin Rider. And uh, this will leave the Jet Synchron in the graveyard for potential future plays as well. I think it's going to be... And also, I don't want to discard either of these cards. Like, I really like having both Maxi and Imperm here, so because I can get away with doing this line without having to use Jet Synchron like that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do it. I think it's just beneficial for, again multiple reasons to keep to both keep the jet synchron as an option later and to keep the uh, disruptions I have in my hand as options as well all right so yep as usual it it's really more of like I think there's two halves to this combo if you want to like break this combo down into multiple phases that have if that helps you remember it better there's basically like the difference or the the, the split of the halves I consider to be um, like getting Baron plus Yazzie onto the board and then using Baron to pop Yazzie and start off the rest of the plays from there because from there yep, we're able to get back the Chi win and get the tie out of the deck Use that to make a token, then because we have a normal monster on board, we can use the Ashina to summon a Vishuda from deck. Then you go into the Chi Shao, use that to grab the Emergence, which we'll use to grab the Protoss later. And then of course we use the Chi Win plus the Vishuda for the Baxia. We can even just pop the Fateful Adventure here, not to give up any of the, um, like the Nine Pillars or the Imperm in our hand. So we'll use that to blow that up, bring back the Adhara that we sent off the Taiya here, and then make the Chi, uh, or sorry, the, the Chao Feng. And then from there, yeah, emergence for Protoss, and then we'll have all that, plus the Nine Pillars, plus the Imperm, plus the Maxi. So, this is definitely like an ideal starting play with the Adventure 10 line here. And really just goes to show, like, how powerful the deck is. And also goes to show that you really don't always need to have something like the cross that doesn't need to play through your opponent's outs. Like, it's... It's often going to be part of your plays anyway to have a negate by the time your opponent is even able to Nibiru you. And that's kind of one of the main things that um, the, that uh, cross that designator is used to hit. Well, I mean, it's used to hit like you know, pretty much any hand trap, obviously. So, okay, so here they activate the Draconic Diagram, and I, I assumed, I think, reasonably enough that it was True King. So, I use the Baron to negate and destroy the diagram right away. Uh, then they summon the um, the Jewel Crocodile here thing, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's going to be obviously. Uh, tell a sign that they're dinosaurs, um, as is the fact that they're going to activate the double evolution pill. So, I did actually debate this for a little bit here. I was like, do I actually want to let this resolve, or am I fine with them summoning the Tyranno, and then I can just negate that with the Chi Shao or the Imperm? And I ultimately decided that this was worth hitting with the Nine Pillars, because, um, one, the Chao Fang, as far as I'm concerned, has already done its job. It prevented the, uh, what is this called? This crocodile thing? <laughs> the, uh, Animadorned Archaeosaur, right. Um, the Chaofeng has already prevented that from using its effect, and I'm going to be able to search more disruption by using the Nine Pillars here. Uh, we'll destroy the Chaofeng, and then we can add an Ash, and then at that point my opponent's only going to have one other card left in their hand, right? So from there I'm reasonably confident that I can stop this one card between the Chi Shao that I'll still have live on my board, the Imperm I have face down, the Max C in my hand, and the Ash I'll be searching with the Chao Feng here. So I'm more than fine using the Nine Pillars on this uh, double evolution pill. Which I believe my opponent does just concede after this gets, yep, after that gets shuffled back. The opponent just concedes as, uh, again, the one card they have in their hand is not nearly enough to stand up to all of the threats and disruption that I'm able to put out with my board here. So, all right, let's take a look at the next game. Okay, so this one is going to be against Adventure Phantom Knights. Although this replay was only the one turn there, so um, I don't think we actually get to really see any of what they're going to end up doing. I think this was actually, if I remember right, just to uh, kind of reiterate 
the yeah so this is going to be how to uh, do I want to reiterate a little bit how to pull off the uh, number 42 line um, because I do still see some like the occasional comment asking like what number 42 galaxy tomahawk is used for in the extra deck um, we'll just cross out designator this uh, maxi here so yeah, I just wanted to show this off, just kind of like reiterate that a bit here. So, uh, number 42 is used as, as an alternative means of going into Auroradon that does not utilize Halki Fibrax. Or rather, it utilizes two level 7s, the Griffin Rider and the Tiny Spirit Vishuda. So, uh, we're going to special summon the Vishuda here because we only have non-effect um, monsters on the board, just the Adventure Token. So, uh, we'll then use the Fateful Adventure to search up the Griffin Rider, discarding that Dracobac, and then we can equip that for free as well. So once we have Griffin Rider and the Vishuda online, then we have two level 7 monsters. That means we can overlay them into the number 42 Galaxy Tomahawk. Uh, you'll want to summon this in a main monster zone. If you summon in the extra monster zone, you can still pull this line off, but you have to use your barricade board blocker first. But um, in any case, yeah, we'll use the Galaxy Tomahawk to get our tokens here. We'll sack the, the Galaxy Tomahawk and two of the tokens in order to make the... Mecha Fan and Beast Aurorodon. And as always with the Aurorodon, just make sure that you've got the three zones open to be able to summon the three Mecha Phantom Beast tokens. Uh, now we can use the Aurorodon effect. I'll pop itself and the uh, Adventure token. I actually technically should have popped the... Um, well, I could have popped the Mecha Eagle token. It kind of doesn't matter in a way which one you pop, but um, I think the Adventure token is, is not a bad call here, so... Yeah, now we'll use the O-Lion to get yet another token. And I actually, because I did this the way I did it, um, I actually ultimately, like, almost lose out on card space here. Like, I almost don't have enough room to do the full combo, but um, no. This is a, this is kind of proof that it doesn't, it usually, mostly, it doesn't matter, like, how you do the combo line. You should have enough room as long as you utilize your extra monster zone the way I am. So, yeah, I decided to use the Battle Eagle token because it was going to get uh, destroyed at the end of the turn anyway. Uh, that's going to leave me with the two Mecha Phantom Beast tokens, but again, that's ultimately going to be fine. We'll, we'll have barely enough room to squeeze it in. Alright, now yep, we'll use Taya's effect, we actually Yazzy, summon the Sword Soul token, uh, sink those off into the uh, Chi Shao, that'll search the Emergence, which will let us add the Protos. And then, of course, the Taya is going to be used to send the Adhara. That way we can uh, bring it back with the Baxia to make the uh, Chao Feng here in a bit. Okay, we already have the Emergence, so we can even search up the Long Yuan. I actually... Well, we'll go over that here in a second here. So, yep, now we can get the um, Vishuda out. From here, we'll sink into, like I said, the Baxia. Baxia F to pop one of the tokens, get back the Adhara, use that to go into um, Chao Fang. So here what I should have done actually is banish Adhara uh, to wheel one of my banished worms to my hand and then... Actually, did I have one that I could add now that I think about it? Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah, I had plenty. So yeah, what I should have done is use Adhara to add one of my banished worms, then discard that for Long Yuan and made a Chen Ging and then summon Protoss. Because I summoned Protoss first, I only had one monster zone open after that, and then I'm not actually able to uh, make the Chen Ging with the uh, Long Yuan there. So that was a bit of a misplay on my part there. Um, it ultimately didn't matter because they just conceded, but uh, technically I should have also been able to have a Chen Ging in addition to the Protoss there with that board. So. All right, we have uh, one more game to take a look at. Let's go straight into it. Okay, so this game here is going to be against Sky Strikers, and I mostly kept this game to show off um, a nice little... Because I, I see, you know, and I've been meaning to make this video for so long, just one dedicated video to, like, playing with and around hand traps. Uh, but I did want to show an iteration, or not iteration, an instance of me uh, utilizing Ash Blossom in, like, a non-obvious way. So playing against Sky Strikers, opponent's going to leave by summoning a ray and going into Shizuku. Um, and then from there, they just, they pass, right? They just go to their end phase. So, I'm already thinking to myself, okay, the fact that they pass without setting anything means, and, you know, just given Sky Striker and what I know about the deck, means that they probably have a lot of hand traps in their hand. Um, you can kind of guess this based on how certain decks will play their turns out. And given the way that the Sky Striker player is playing, it, it just seems obvious to me. So, given that that's the case, I'm actually fairly... Um, weary of Maxi here. Uh, Maxi could very easily 
given that it's Sky Strikers and they sometimes even run two Nibiru, but pretty much always run one, um, that Maxi is a lot scarier. I mean, you should be thinking about Nibiru whenever your opponent or you're playing into a Maxi period, but against this deck in particular, I definitely want to be thinking about it. So I want to save this Ash Blossom for a potential Maxi on my opponent's turn. And I'm not going to use it on the Shizuku here. This is not a decision I would always make, but again, just given that my opponent didn't set anything and has four seemingly dead cards or cards that they don't use on their first turn in hand, I'm inclined to think that it's very reasonably likely that one of them is a max C. So, um, also, they're just going to search and engage here. I'm totally fine with that because if things go right, which they will if I Ash Blossom a max C, I'm just going to win on my turn. And them adding that engage is not going to be relevant whatsoever. So, uh, that's the other reason I'm fine with not ashing the Shizuku Surge there. If it comes down to it and they don't have a max C and or they stop my line, I can just ash the engage later. It's fine. Alright, so we're going to lead with the adventure line here, activating the right. And sure enough, they do have the max C. So as soon as they pop that off, I'm just going to fire off my Ash Blossom in response there. And uh, yeah, like I said, this is the exact reason why I did not ash the Shizuku there. I feel like... And, and for me, I actually had to fight the hesitation. Like, a lot of people would just pop off the ash on the Shizuku there without really thinking about it. But once I realized again that my opponent hadn't said anything, they moved straight to end phase and they had four seemingly dead cards in their hand. And just again, and again, also looking at my hand, thinking about how I wanted to win on the next turn, I could, I felt like I could relatively easily with the hand. Um, I ultimately decided that, yeah, let's just save the ash in case they have a C next turn. And sure enough, they did have it. So, very glad that I did that. And. This is kind of a small part of what I would talk about in an overall video about going or not. Well, it could be about going second and playing through disruption. Um, you know, either or. But those are probably be two different videos. Maybe I don't know. Just I'm still very much in like the rough drafts of trying to figure out how I want to do those. But um, just still want to show off like minor th instances that would come up in that kind of content uh, here in other videos as well. So, all right, now that we are, yeah, that's all for the games. Let's go ahead and move now to the outro. Alrighty, I want to thank everybody, as always, for watching all the way to the very end. That means a lot to me personally, and is also a great way of supporting the channel. Similarly, uh, commenting and subscribing also mean a lot to me, and are also great ways of supporting the channel. Uh, comments, as always, love to see ya. Let me know what your take on Adventure 10 Yi post ban list is, how good you think it is, how you would build it, what you think should or shouldn't change about it, uh, what you think of you know my list here. Um, as always, I'm very open to uh, good constructive criticism, which you guys are very good about giving, so... Um, yeah, definitely don't be shy about commenting below there. And then subscribing, yeah, by subscribing, yeah, obviously, great way of supporting the channel and also uh, gives you notifications of when my videos drop, which does happen every single day. So know that you do get a daily Master Duel video when you subscribe. But uh, yeah, I think that's about all the time I've got for today's video. So yeah, without further ado, this is XLex. I'm signing out. Hope you guys have a fantastic day.